Next in our little bit of theory here, we're going to talk about scales and how they affect auto-tune. To talk about scales, I've got a synth sound that just smoothly ramps from one pitch all the way up to a pitch a fifth above. Take a listen. And then it ramps back down. Okay, it's not perfectly smooth. It's as smooth as the little pitch wheel on the Oxygen 8 could make it, but you get the idea. Let's open up an auto-tune, and the auto-tune is set to chromatically tune, key of C, but it doesn't really matter what key we're in if it's set to chromatic, because it's going to quantize the pitch to every half note on this piano keyboard. You can watch the pitch on the piano keyboard. Let's listen. We'll bypass, hear it without. And then with auto tune correction. So you could hear the auto tune took that pitch and forced it to the nearest half step on this piano keyboard. We could select the major scale and it would force it to only these notes on this list here C, D, E, only the white notes on the keyboard. So there are no black notes in that keyboard or that scale of white notes key of C. There are a number of other scales that are in here. There's a minor scale. So minor scale is the same as major, except the, the third is flatted. So you can see there, there's E flat on the third. And then there's lots of weird scales. Let's hear a Greek diatonic. It's kind of odd flatted uh, second and flatted third. And lots of others. Most of these are historical ones, like in the time of Bach and some of these other older composers, the scales they used were a little bit different. The tunings were a little bit different on instruments, so if you want to hear them in the older tunings, you can use auto-tune to get them there, or there are just different ones like Indian. You can see they're just a little out of tune compared to our western scale. So we go back to a western scale here. You can see they're all 100 cents, 200 cents, 300 cents, right on the, the number and these other scales, who knows. They're a little stretched or squeezed, and they sound out of tune to us, but not to everyone. However, most of the time when you use auto-tune, I'd recommend leaving this on chromatic and individually selecting the major and minor notes here. So we can set major. Let's hear our sweep. You know, we've got a neat little melody that's got a few accidental notes here right around C. We want all those to be allowed, but we want it to be a straight major scale up at the top. So it's allowed these notes in between, but it won't allow an F sharp, a G sharp, or an A sharp as part of the scale. It'll quantize those or pitch shift those to the nearest above or below a note. Pretty cool. You can customize your scale. A lot of times just leaving this at chromatic and selecting major and then removing the one note you want to have. You can also click down here to remove individual notes from the scale. Let's hear what they sound like um, if we bypass them instead of remove. You have another option here, bypass. What bypass does is turns off the auto-tune feature on that note. So we'll select a major scale, except we'll allow C sharp. So we heard the pitch smoothly slide all the way until we got to the D, and then it grabbed it and quantized to the E and kept quantizing from there. Pretty cool. How do you know when you need this? Well, if you start, you know, setting major scale and your singer sounds foul <laughs> and a note, you can watch the scale down here, the piano keyboard, and see which note. If it's a bluesy note that's bent, you could just um, bypass it and say, all right, I'm going to allow that flat note to be a little flat or sliding because that sounds cool. I don't want auto-tune messing with that note. I'll leave it alone. 
or you can remove it from the scale and say, no, no, she meant to do major and she keeps leaning toward the, mat the minor. She's flat on her thirds. I'm going to remove those from the scale so there's no chance she'll be allowed to sing one. Auto-tune will fix it.